You know, one thing we haven't had a chance to talk about today were uh, integrative or complementary modalities for the treatment of pain. And I think all of you would agree that, that they play some role in the, in the treatment of pain. When you look at some of the low back pain studies, uh, cognitive behavioral therapies, talk therapy, uh, has tremendous a, a equal benefit to analgesics. Uh, does anybody know of any data in neuropathic pain? Charles, have you heard of anything about, about complementary therapies, acupuncture or? So there's, lim there's limited data for acupuncture in neuropathic pain. There's okay, there's some data for cognitive behavioral approaches in, in general. Um, and um, alpha lipoic acid um, is a, 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 and carnitine um, are supplements, especially alpha lipoic acid at 600 milligrams per day is an antioxidant that's been studied in Germany and other places uh, and particularly effective in a randomized double blind controlled study for diabetic neuropathy. Um, and uh, uh, there are a vi there's a, a product and I don't, uh, that in incorporates a number of different B vitamins that's been shown to be um, helpful for diabetic neuropathy as well. So there are emerging um, some data. I'm sure our colleagues have other thoughts as well. I think if you look, uh, there's some very interesting work with chemotherapy-induced peripheral neuropathy, both for prevention and then also treatment. I think you're right. Antioxidants uh, have been looked at this. Uh, even going back and looking at uh, topical menthol, things to that effect, you know, we have some new data on what receptors it's actually working on besides the gate theory. You mean opiate receptors? Uh, potentially, right? <laughs> <laughs> potentially, right? I mean, but these are some right. of the things we're learning. The more that we go back and revisit these, uh, the more potential they have. So I, I think the bottom line is that integrative um, medicine is where we take complementary alternative medicine and marry it with allopathic traditional medicine, and, and we rely on a multimodal strategy as pain for clinicians. So, you know, we practice integrative medicine every day front line. That's the bottom line. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, uh, we'd be remiss not to talk about interventional therapies. Chris, tell me about nerve blocks or epidurals. I mean, I remember the old data showing that if, if you get to that nerve root early on with some corticosteroid, perhaps you can calm down the inflamed nerve roots from the, from the zoster virus. What are your thoughts? Interventions may not be so much evidence-based for types of neuropathic pain, and I guess it really depends on the type of neuropathic pain that we're talking about. I don't think interventions are well indicated for post-neuropathic neurology or peripheral neuropathy, but there is a subset of neuropathic pain that could respond well. So Joe and Charles eloquently went over the different types of neuropathic pain and multi-mechanistic analgesia, and here local anesthetic can also be mechanism-based. And here the principle behind it is to reset the nerve. So I'm not sure of cortisone as much, but certainly there is evidence to show that local anesthetic and resetting of that nerve can maybe work for a duration of time. The probability is that the pain is going to recur at some point, but the duration of pain really can be worthwhile. Yeah, you know, the way I think about it, I, I kind of picture, is the nerve damage temporary or permanent, right? If you have permanent nerve damage, Putting some steroid on the nerve might give you some temporary benefit, but certainly no long-lasting benefit. And that's where I think to more of my systemic long-term therapies. So, Vitaly, let's...